So to get started, I'm just going to tin my tip right there. So that's ready to go once we start soldering. So in this video, you're going to learn how to solder a component onto a PCB board. You're going to learn to solder two wires together to make a connection. And you're going to learn how to solder a wire onto a PCB board path. So we're going to go over a bunch of different topics and methods for soldering and talk about some of the key components of making a good solder. Okay, so once you get your tip tin and it's ready to go, let's talk about how to solder a component onto a PCB board. So if I want to solder this component on here, I need to put the legs of my component through the PCB board, push it down. Now, depending on how well those legs sit in there, how thick the legs are, how big the holes are, you may need to bend one of the legs a little bit so that it sits in there right and it stays in there. But sometimes you don't really even need to do that much and it'll stay in there. Now, I sometimes will use a stand, but for something like this, you can really just solder it on the mat if you want to. There's nothing wrong with that. There's some things you want to think about. I'm just going to use this extra tip that I have. Um, there's different styles of tips and they can be used different ways to do different things. So if I come in here and I put some uh, heat, I'm putting, I'm going to apply heat to the leg and the pad, right? The pad is that circular part on the PCB board. I'm going to apply heat to the leg and the pad by putting my tip right there. And that's with a conical tip and that'll work pretty well. Um, you want to size the tip you don't want the tip to be too big when it comes on here or it's going to be hard to um, sort of place it in the right spot. Um, the solder is going to want to run towards the tip. So if your tip's too big, you might have a hard time keeping the solder where you want it because the solder is going to want to stick to the tip. Um, now, once you do this, once you've, you've applied heat for maybe one, two seconds, you want to heat that, that leg up enough that the solder can melt onto the pad in the leg of your component. Now, there's some different ways to come in with the solder, right? So as I come in here, I can either bring solder around this side and I can sort of get heat through the leg in the pad, all right? And that works and a lot of people do it that way. I don't think that's the best way and that's because there's not a lot of what's called thermal linkage now, if I were to bring my tip here and I were to put solder right in that joint, right in this V made between the leg and my iron, I can get thermal linkage between the tip of the iron and the leg of my component. Okay, so real quick, um, thermal linkage. Understanding this concept is going to help you a lot if you're going to do soldering. So with thermal linkage, it has to do with the amount of surface area contact that the soldering iron is gonna make with the work. The work in our case is gonna be the leg of the component and the pad of the PCB board. But it could also be braided wire or solid core wire or whatever you are trying to solder. So if you bring your, your solder in from this side, the thermal linkage is only gonna happen at the contact area between the leg and the soldering, which is really, really small. That's like a super small surface area. So conduction, can only happen through that point. So conduction happens very slowly and you might not be able to get enough thermal transfer to heat this up to what you need and it's gonna have, have a hard time melting the solder. Now, if you bring your solder in from this side, what's gonna happen is you're gonna melt the solder in here and you're gonna allow heat to transfer in a larger area. All right, that larger area of conduction is gonna allow more heat to flow from your soldering iron into the leg of your component or your work. And that's gonna get you a higher heat transfer rate, which is gonna help you melt the solder faster and you're gonna have less problems. In this clip, you can actually see thermal linkage at play. As the solder is brought on the other side of the pin, there's some difficulty getting the solder to melt until the solder starts to flow, forming a conductive bridge for heat to transfer over. Once you establish thermal linkage, you wanna make sure you get the right amount of solder onto the pad and leg. So you want to check and make sure that solder is all the way around the pad. And you want to see solder fill in and fill it uh, that leg of the resistor. And by fill it, we just mean that's the curved part of the solder that you want to be ideally can concave uh, going from the leg 
to the pad. In order to do that, you know, the main things are you got to get it hot enough. You got to have a, so in order to get it hot, you have to have a clean, unoxidized tip that's going to allow heat to transfer. You want your tip to be big enough. In this case, this would be a big enough tip. If you had a really, really small tip, you might have trouble transferring heat just because of the lack of conduction through a small tip. The other thing you could have problems with is if you have a lot of oxidation on your pad or your board or the leg of your component, that's going to have, that's going to make it difficult. Now, for the most part, if you have rosin core solder, it's going to take care of the oxidation that's going to happen on the leg and on the pad. So anytime you have metal just sitting out chilling, it's going to oxidize, guaranteed. So you have to use rosin. You have to use flux in order to remove that oxidation. If you don't use flux uh, core solder, you're going to have a lot of problems getting that oxidation layer off. And if you don't get that oxidation layer off, it's not going to wet properly. It's not going to do the correct alloying. It's not going to mix together properly, and it's just not going to work well. It's going to have a, a bad joint. All right, so let's come in with our actual iron. Let me crank it back up. I've had I turn my irons down when I'm talking so that I don't oxidize the tips as much. Okay, so a lot of people make a big deal about the temperature of your iron, and there's lots of debates that you can get into about what temperature should your soldering iron be. However, the temperature of your iron is not the most important thing to understand. The most important thing to understand is how much heat you can transfer onto the leg and the pad of your PCB board. Now, the higher the heat on your iron, the faster you're going to get heat to flow into your PCB, into your uh, your pad and your leg when all other things are equal. But if you have a larger tip, that's going to cause faster heat transfer. If you create that thermal linkage with the solder, that's going to cause heat to transfer faster. Even just the um, the oxidation that's occurred, the removal of oxidation, all those things factor in to transfer heat. So the most important thing you need to think about is how do I transfer heat onto this as quickly as possible? And so the, the faster you, the higher you turn this up, that's one easy thing to control, right? And that's why a lot of people try to just crank this thing up all the way to whatever it goes, eight, 900 degrees, you know, whatever. Okay, that can work. And I don't think that's the best way to do it. And, you know, you can blast me in the comments for why that's wrong. But the reality is you want to keep, you want to get this as high as it needs to be in order to transfer enough heat to get a proper solder. Now, sometimes that takes some dialing in I usually start around 600 degrees for uh, lead-based solders, and I usually start around 675 for lead-free solder. So for lead-free solders, you're going to have to have a higher temperature. But there's other things that matter, right? So as I use this soldering iron, things that are going to also matter is how much soldering have I already done. Um, this, the size of this barrel is going to store heat, but if I start using that for other things and heat drains away, well, I may not be replenishing heat fast enough. Uh, and so, you know, it may be trying to maintain 600 degrees, but it's really not. So there's lots of different things that you need to consider um, when, you're, when you're doing solder. Now, whenever you go to solder something, first thing you want to do is clean it off. You know, there's, it's been sitting for a little while. Uh, it may need to be retinned if it's been a while, if it's been a real long time. So make sure you clean off. Right, clean off your tip. Always, always, always clean off your tip. All right, now it's a little tricky to do this with the camera. Now I will say this, if I were to come in here right now, I'm, I got this solder in my hands. This solder is a little thick. It's a little big diameter in my opinion for the, the size of this pad and leg. So could it work? Yes, it can work, but I'd be even more comfortable if I had my other solder. All right, here we go. So if I have this solder, this size solder just matches a lot better with the size uh, component and pad that I'm working with. So I'm going to use this smaller diameter solder. And that just helps me avoid putting too much solder onto the pad and the leg. Okay, so let's see if we can do this with the camera. So, right, I'm going to come. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to lightly touch this, let it heat up. And then I'm going to put the solder on there, let it flow. So when you're getting enough heat transfer, 
and you're using the correct amount of solder, you should get a pretty good solder joint and fillet. The key things that you want to look for is that the solder is nice and shiny, that there's a concave shape to the solder. Now let's show you a couple things that can go wrong when you're soldering. But first things first, let's go ahead and trim the leg of this component. Okay, so right here, let me show you what it looks like if you don't get enough solder onto the pad. So here's an example of when you don't have enough solder. And the good thing is if you don't get enough solder onto the, the pad on the leg, you can always go back in with additional solder. And you always wanna check the other side of the PCB board to make sure that the solder went through. So if you didn't get enough solder, you can go ahead, and try to put some more solder on there and see if you can get that too wet onto the pad all the way across. But if there's not enough solder, there may be parts of the pad that are left empty, which you wanna come back in with more solder. It's always easier to put more solder onto a PCB board than to take solder off of a PCB board. So anytime you wanna err on the side of caution, err on the side of caution of too little solder. Now here's an example of having too much solder and you can see that you lose that concave shape. You get this large kind of bulb or blob of solder. And it's not that that can't work. It's just really bad for inspection and it could be an indication of a, a cold solder joint. And I'll show you what that is in a second. So a lot of beginners put way too much solder on like this and this would just be a, you know, a really nasty <laughs> job of soldering. And you see this a lot when you're learning to solder. People, they put way more solder than they think. They think the more the better. But in the soldering world, you really want to have the correct amount of solder to get that concave shape. And that's so that you can ensure that the solder joint was properly done for high reliability soldering. If you do put too much solder on there, you can come in with something called the solder wick, which is basically stranded copper wire. A lot of people get frustrated with these because as they come in, they struggle to get a high enough heat, especially if you're using a conical tip. I recommend using a flat, also known as a beveled tip for your soldering iron when you're doing uh, desoldering using the solder wick. But I'm gonna show you a little trick that you can use if you just wanna keep the conical tip on there. Uh, the key thing is it's hard to get enough heat transfer and so you don't get any wet. So what you can do is you can bring a little bit of solder onto their side, get thermal linkage, and then you should see enough heat transfer so that you can get the rest of that solder ball to melt. Now it takes a little bit of finesse and kind of keep working at it, keep going at it, removing solder bit by bit, and you can just keep going through the process until you remove enough solder so that you can once again see that concave shape. But even if you can get one side looking good, you remember you have to look on both sides of the PCB board. So like I said, it's always easier to do more solder than to take away solder. The biggest thing we try to avoid in soldering is what's called a cold joint. And this happens most often when the temperature doesn't get hot enough on the pad or whatever you're trying to, the work that you're trying to solder onto, and you end up just smearing solder over the surface. And so no alloying takes place. So I'm going to take this copper plate right here and I'm going to uh, put solder and it's really not going to create a new alloy right now I'm just going to get solder and smear it over the surface of this copper plate and what's going to happen is not no uh, there's not going to be enough bonding between the solder and there's no mixing of the solder and the copper and so there's really no good strong physical mechanical connection that takes place to illustrate that, let me go ahead and take a screwdriver and just scrape that solder off, right? That comes off super easy. I barely have to push on it. Now let's take a look at a smaller piece of copper. And this piece is gonna be way easier for my iron to heat. I don't have a particularly high power soldering iron. So I'm using a small work piece so that I can get the solder to wet the, the work piece properly. So here you can see that the solder is actually wetting the copper. It's not being smeared on. It's flowing properly onto the surface, mixing and alloying. Now, if I go ahead and take a screwdriver and try to scrape that off, it's gonna be much harder to get off. In fact, I really can't get it off. I can just get a little slim layer because it hasn't cooled all the way. So you can see a much stronger mechanical connection in solder that has properly wetted and alloyed with the underlying material. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is learn how to tin a wire, in this case, a stranded wire. 
So the internet abounds with funny, crazy ways to tin wire and to connect to wires, and there's all these uh, weird little hacks that I've seen, but I'm just gonna stick with the main way that the PACE training manual tells you how to do it. Um, now, ideally, I'd actually have a different tip here, probably a wedge-shaped, flat, flatter surface on my soldering iron, but this will work just fine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat up my wire, I'm gonna just go ahead and leave my soldering iron. I'm not even gonna hold it because I wanna use my two hands right here. Um, so I'm gonna leave uh, the copper wire on there, let it heat up nice and good. And as it heats up, I'm gonna just go ahead and let the solder work its way into the wire. And then I'm gonna drag it across. I'm gonna get a nice tinned wire. Right, so uh, that's what you're going for. You don't want the solder to work its way up into the insulation, um, but now when you go to put this onto your PCB board pad, or if you want to connect this to another wire, you can do it pretty easily. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and solder these two tinned wires together right now. They're not soldered together, they've just been tinned. Um, and this is where helping hands can really, really come in, in handy. <laughs> good one right all right so you know you want these to be like barely sitting on each other no pressure because if if you do they're going to kind of like spring away as you drag the iron across but yeah they're tin so they should heat up very quickly you just may want to add a little bit more solder as you do this i've noticed that tends to help me and i'm going to kind of start heating them up right here Feed in a little bit of solder to get the process going. Add a little bit of fluxes as I'm doing that. I'm gonna go ahead and retin my soldering iron. It's not transferring heat quite quick enough for me. This is where having a different size, you know, this soldering tip is too small to really do this job. A better size tip would be to use something, something like the tip on the left. But let's see if I can get it with a little patience and a little ingenuity. All right, so I'm going to put that there. I'm going to try to create some thermal linkage by feeding some solder onto there, onto the top there. There we go. And now I'm just going to be able to drag that across back and forth. This nice wetting action between the two. Now you want to, you don't want to grab those right away. They do take a second to cool. Give a little tap to see if it's nice and solidified and everything looks good. Just want to check it real quick, make sure it's not hot. Yeah, so that's a pretty decent solder on that side. Uh, th this side could probably use a little more solder right there, but honestly, depending on what your, your purposes are and what you're doing, this thing is a very strong connection. I mean, I can't, I can't pull that apart. So. That's a very good mechanically sound connection. And the next thing you'd want to do is put some heat shrink tubing on that. Uh, use a heat gun or something to shrink that heat shrink tubing so you don't have exposed electrical wire. But depending on what you're, you're using that for, you know, you may want to go back in and add a little bit more solder. But if it's just a hobby project, it may not be necessary. Okay, real quick, let's just take a look at what you need to do if you want to connect a wire to a PCB board pad. So first you need to tin the pad. So you might want to use a larger iron tip for this. I used a flat tip. Uh, you can see I tinned the, the entire surface of the pad. I have a tinned wire that I'm bringing in and you want to make sure you're able to heat up both the pad and the wire and get the solder to wet both of those things. Right there, that's not bad. You could, I would recommend bringing in a little bit more solder at that point. You want to try to bring in enough solder that you do not see the individual strands of the wire. So let's go ahead and add a little bit more solder. And ideally at the end, it's gonna come out looking something like this. So I hope that video helped you become better at soldering. And if you wanna know more about soldering tools and equipment and all the different types of gadgets that you can get for soldering, take a look at my other video and Hopefully that'll answer some of your questions. Thanks.